And so the cataclysm has decimated all regions. Maybe there are some realms where there is still hope. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Friday Fantasy Show from the Bottled Imp, exploring the realms of fantasy. My name is Ken Boyd and today we are taking a look at a mini, 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 mini expansion for Talisman 4th edition. This is The Deep Realms and it's designed by John New and Samuel W. Bailey. Now this is a curious one. This one started out life as, I think, I'm quite correct in saying this, as kind of like a fan uh, origins. This started out as a kind of print on demand. It was pitched a fancy flight and accepted. So they started off doing print on demand and then it became that popular. They thought they'd actually package it up and just print it out for the shops. And that's where I got involved. Now I just will quickly say that at the time of recording, Fancy Flight have lost the license to create Talisman. So the fourth edition, in no longer, it's running out. They're not making any more. And so Games Workshop is taking the license back again and they're gonna be producing the fifth edition. We don't know what that is yet, who knows? But we are very excited. So I thought, even though these are kind of getting out of print now, you can still get them as, we, as we're recording this, they are getting quite expensive. I think I looked on uh, Amazon and they were like, this one was about 40, 40 pounds, 50 pounds. So I thought I'd still do them though, because I'm a completionist. We've only got two left. We've got this one and we've got the Nether Realms. Anyway, let's crack on to see what the Deep Realms has in store. <laughs> The Deep Realms. What exactly is it all about? Well, this little mini expansion is all about going underground. It actually is kind of like going into the sewers. It's connecting two expansions. So you will need the uh, city expansion and you will also need the dungeon expansion because the Deep Realms actually connects the two corner boards. So you've, if you, you know, obviously if you've got those expansions, then you can actually use the Deep Realms with this expansion. So what do you get in the box? Let's find out. What you get is cards, basically. You'll be getting these, the actual realms themselves, which are, one is the Rat's Queen's Nest. Rat Queen's Nest. And also you'll be getting, oh no, sorry, the one I showed you just there was the Wrath Lord. So let's do that again. That's the Rat's Queen's, no, the Rat Queen's Nest. <laughs> it's going well, isn't it? And also you'll be getting, as I said before, the Wrath or Wraith Lord's Lair. And they actually connect, as I say, the two corner expansions, the city and the dungeon. Now the card, both realms, they kind of mirror each other, so they both kind of do the same thing. And on top of both of the cards, the realms, is a bridge. And so what you do to set the game up, you will also be having these bridge cards, and they've got a nice cool little illustration of a rickety old bridge on the back. And these are basically various different creatures, quite powerful and they pretty much all have special abilities on them as well. So you've got a cave troll. They're, they're, they're very cool, actually. Um, oh, look, a shadow soul. Uh, a zombie knight. We like the sound of that. Zombie knight. So these are pretty much monsters. I think there's a few other little surprises in there as well. But what you do is you'll be shuffling the bridge deck, and then you'll be placing it between the two realms. And then what you'll do is you will take, there's the tunnel deck. And so again, there's things like, oh, that's a monster, an enemy as well. So there are various different things in here. That's craft, oh look, are these all monsters? I'm not really sure. Oh, there's an event in this one as well. So there's traps. So there are various different things also hidden in the tunnels. And again, you will shuffle the 
tunnel cards, and then you'll place them beneath the two realms like that. Then what you'll do is you will take the treasure deck from the dungeon expansion and you will shuffle them, as you would normally do anyway, but then you will be taking three cards at random and then you will be facing them up, so you're allowed to know what they are. Um, oh, I love that one, the clockwork owl. I love that. Um, so those are treasures that you can actually gain if you are brave enough. And you place them on the Wrath Lord's lair. And then equally what you do is you, from the city decks, the Magic Emporium, again you'll shuffle them, the Magic Emporium cards, you take two of those, and also from the armory you'll be taking two of those, and then you'll be flipping those over, oh look a scroll, we all like a magic scroll don't we? <laughs> oh and look at that, weapons, battle axe and a fl flail. That sounds a bit painful. So these are kind of, again, little treasures that you can get and you place these cards into the rat's nest. So those are like little mini end games, if you like. So how does it actually play? What you do is you'll have your, obviously your character and you'll be able to enter either of these realms. Now to enter the rat, the rat one, the rat's nest, you'll be coming in from the city, as you can imagine, they're rats. And equally, there is a, a way in to the Wrath Lord's lair, and that is through the dungeon. So I'm going to go through the two different types of kind of encounters that you're going to have when you go into each of these. So probably the first one to explain will be the, the Rat Run or the Skull Passage. Now that is the one that is the top bit of the card, and that actually links the two of these little mini realms. And what you do is you'll be rolling your dice as normal, and then you'll be going, okay, so say I was here, and I decided I wanted to go in, I'd go one, two, and obviously I've got enough to get into that region. As soon as I go into it, that's a good point actually, both of these are separate regions, so if there isn't an event that says it affects this region or it affects all regions, these do count as separate regions, which is kind of important. Uh, you know, obviously if you have things affecting certain regions. So that said, you'll be moving in. As once you move in to the Rat Run or to the Skull Passage, you will then stop immediately. Then what you do is you'll be taking two of the top cards and you'll simply be encountering them. And you'll do them in turn order or number order. There's one here, this is a Shadow Soul. Oh, he's back again. And that is, uh, that's number three, so that one will go first, because I also have an object, which is a broken sword, and that is number five. It's got little numbers on the cards to tell you which order to do them in. So I would obviously have to fight the Shadow Soul, and I would either win or I would be um, lose a life, you know, and there's a little bit of other text on there as well that might cause me to have to lose something else if I lose. And if I, uh, you know, won, I would then take that as a trophy, or I would then, and then I would encounter the next one, which would be an object, and I would then obviously want to pick up that object, possibly. Some, some objects aren't worth picking up, some are. Anyway, at the end of my go, I would then shuffle them back into the bridge deck. So once your end, your turn is over, you will then shuffle them back in. Now on your next turn, you can either decide to press on or to escape. Sounds pretty simple. If you want to escape, you then simply go against the arrow and you'll just go back out. You will obviously roll for your movement and you'll roll back into the city and then follow the arrows around the city as per normal. Equally, if you wanted to press on, then you would just be moving one space from the rat run across the rickety old bridge and into Skull Passage. Now again, it mirrors the Rat Run, so you'll be doing that again. You'll be taking two more, and this time it was Vampire Bats, and also uh, a Falling Slab, it was a trap. So I'll be doing these in, in order as well. The Falling Slab will be first, it's an event, that goes first. And obviously if I've survived these and they get resolved, then I will be moving on. I'll be basically be shuffling them back into the pack, and then that'll be the end of my go. Now I could then, on my next turn, go back again, back this way, and encounter two more again, or if I wanted to, I could then cut across to the dungeon. So the Rat Run and the Skull Passage is a good way if you wanna just cut through 
from the city to the dungeon or the dungeon to the city. It's a nice little cut through. Plus you can, if you want to, start collecting trophies. So if you're relatively tough, that's quite a good way because you know there's a lot of monsters in there. So that's a good way of getting uh, trophies quickly. And if you haven't played the base game, then obviously I would recommend you watch the, the video of the base game that we've done. Anyway, let's move on to the other one. So say you go around to the dungeon and you come here and you want to actually go to the Wrath Lord's Lair, then what you do again, you'll be rolling and you'd roll to get in and then again you have to stop. Then what you will do is you'll be taking three cards from the tunnel and you will then be placing them, you don't look at them, I, I looked at them then, you don't look at them, but what you do is you will then face them down in front of you and those are actually what you're going to be encountering for the next, well, a minimum of three turns. So what you do is when you first draw them, you'll flip over the first one and it happens to be a trap. So you will then actually then encounter that trap and do what it says there. And then that will be the end of your go. Then on your next turn, you'll be flipping over the next one in your space. Oh, look at that. I obviously didn't shuffle them that well. It's another trap. Hopefully I've survived. And then if I have survived, I carry on. So on my next turn, I'll then flip over the other one. And it's a, oh, it's a magic object. It's Horn of Dread. And we all dread the Horn of Dread, don't we? So you would then just resolve that card as well. Once you have done all of those three and they're all resolved, i.e. They're, they're kind of away from you, if there was a monster or an enemy, you would then have to fight that. If you lost against it, it would still be there for your next turn. So you would still have to defeat that in order to carry on. If there is a spirit, if you do draw a spirit from the tunnel cards, they get a plus one during battle. And then what you do is once you've got rid of all your cards, you've resolved all those three, so probably on your fourth turn, but you could stay there for longer, as I say, because you might not get past a monster and an enemy, then you get the pleasure of going in to meet the Wrath Lord. Now, you don't get the treasure straight away. No, you do have to fight him. Of course you do. And he has a craft of four. But what he does do is he also adds one craft on for every treasure that he actually has in his lair. So obviously when you first encounter him, there's going to be three in there. So he has a craft of seven. If you win, then you get to choose one of the treasures. And then you can teleport yourself anywhere that you like into the outer region. If you lose, however, you lose one craft and you also lose a life and you get booted out. You get booted out back into the dungeon and you get booted out to the Hall of Darkness, which is the, one of the corner pieces of the dungeon. And that is how you play that Wrath Lord's Realm. It's pretty much the same over the Rat Queen's Lair, Nest, Place, Pad, <laughs> Crib, Sewer. I don't know, yeah, Rat's Nest. That's probably the best name for it, isn't it? Um, again, you'll be doing exactly the same thing. You'll roll to get in. You'll have to stop there. You'll be taking three of the uh, tunnel cards. And then again, you'll be encountering them one at a time on your go. Now, with this one, if there's a monster, an enemy that has the word rat in it, then they get a plus one during battle. So, like I say, you'll be just encountering these until you totally resolve them and they are discarded or you've taken them as a trophy or a follower, an object, etc, etc. Then once you get into there, the same rules apply. The Rat Queen has a strength of three. So this one's strength, the other one's craft. This has a strength of three. three but she also gains one strength per treasure, or I should say per card in here. And remember, we put four in to begin with, so she will obviously have the same. She'll have a strength of seven. Then if you win, you get to choose one of the cards. And again, you will be teleported anywhere that you like in the outer region on the main board. If you lose, however, though, you must lose a life and an object. If you haven't got any objects, I guess you don't have to lose it but you will have to lose an object and a life as well. And then you will get booted out quite rightly on Rat's Road in the city. And that is pretty much it. I don't think I've forgotten anything. I'm just racking my brains. That's how you play the deep rounds. What do I think? I think it's a joy. It's very easy, quick to learn, to pick up. 
And what I like about it is I love the fact that you can just jump from one region to the next, you know, from the city to the dungeon. I thought that was a brilliant idea. And it just adds that extra atmosphere of actually going under the city, you know, or going, you know, deep under a dungeon as well. It just, it, it has a different atmosphere. It's very distinctive, very thematic. I love it. I love the fact there's little mini bosses in there as well that you can attack. And the fact that there's treasure. I do believe there is a talisman in, in the, one of the, you know, there's one talisman in the tunnel, um, I think, I'm not 100% sure, but anyway, you might be able to get a talisman from going in there. Plus, like I say, it's really cool because these treasures from the treasure deck, it's an easy, easier way than going fully through and try to beat the actual Lord of Darkness in the, in the tunnel. So you can get treasures that way, you can get extra equipment from, you know, by doing the Queen's Rats, the Rat Queen's Lair and defeat her. Um, and plus there's other things in there and if you want to level up, you know, and you say you're pretty strong and your, your craft is pretty good and you want to le level up, you know there's going to be lots of monsters there because sometimes in the adventure deck, that you know, you might not be picking monsters all the time so you can level up and then once you beat those monsters you can take them as trophies and cash them in for craft or strength. So I really like it, the, the artwork is beautiful, it's a really, really nice addition. What I will say is yes, because they, it's sort of out of print now, would you spend 40 pounds on it, 50 pounds, or you know, $100 or whatever it is in the States? It's a tough call. If you've got that sort of money to, to, to spend, then yes, I would say go for it, because it does add another little flavor to the game. Sometimes you don't want to put all the corner boards out and play talisman with. We do, but sometimes you know, other people don't. And therefore, if you want a little extra, so you want your two corner boards out and just another little extra that doesn't complicate the game too much, then this is perfect for this. So I would definitely recommend this. It would be nice to see it when they do the fifth edition that they still have this one. I'm hoping that it will be compatible with the fifth edition. There we go. That's the Deep Realm. <laughs> Deep Realms for Talisman expansion. Oh yes, very exciting. Do love it. It's a nice little mini edition. We will also be doing the Nether Realm. That's the last one of the fourth edition. As I say, new edition is coming out. They say later this year. Who knows? But what I do know is that we're keeping it unreal. Especially if you like Talisman.